Chinese FX reserves have fallen below three trillion for the first time since 2011. Oh. And there is a community out there who are terrified that China is going to undermine any positive moves we've seen for markets and economies uh, over the last 12, 18 months or so here. Um, so the below message. Three trillion, right? Mm. The market thought it would be two, tri two three trillion. Bang so on. It's below, I mean, I think below. the Reuters forecast was pretty much that we'd be bang on and there right. wouldn't really be any adjustment here, but we've gone to 2.9. Mm. My God, hold the front page. Fortunately, Nick Nelson has joined us. Um, who really doesn't spend too much time focusing on Chinese FX reserves, I don't suppose. In fact, Nick is head of European Equity Strategy at UBS. He's joined us along with Henry Dixon, fund manager at GLG. Do we need to care about this? Well, look, if this were in this room last time this year, right, we would have been very concerned about this, right? We had Chinese data that was rolling over, the Chinese stock market at the beginning of January, remember all those stops we had. We had people worried about the US falling into recession because the RSM was below 50. So there was a huge growth scare, as it were. Um, and, and now, I'd argue, given the way bond yields have moved, inflation expectations have moved, we seem to be almost looking at the other side of the pie. So it's almost as if, if we're in the Goldilocks economy, yeah. the porridge is too hot, not too cold. But People have been maybe less concerned about China uh, than they were 12 months ago. Um, they've come back from, what, 3.8 trillion or so at peak to, to round about, well, as you say, just below three. Mm. I mean, it's still a fairly chunky uh, number, let's, uh, let's be honest. And I think China still seems to be able to control its own economy. It seems to be effectively a command economy. And in that sense, if it doesn't want to have a hard landing, it, it can avoid it. And I think that's what happened last year. And, and I suspect growth slows a little bit this year, but nothing um, too dramatic. It's a double whammy, though, when you've got outflows from the economy and you've got the central bank tightening interest rates. It's a double layer that other economies will probably struggle to survive under. China, a different equation. But I think what's interesting, I mean, I, I quite like the basic resources story, but today you've got news flow that would be arguably negative for the sector if you're talking about any form of a slowdown or tightening the market, yet barely any movement in basic resources today. Uh, investors just immune at this point to any news out of China. Well, I think the um, basic resources have been following metal prices and we've seen uh, you know, uh, net long positions in copper, for example, at five-year highs. We've seen uh, some, maybe some speculation in some of the, uh, the, the metal futures uh, and that's supported um, the share prices of, of, of many of these stocks. Um, you know, they again have come from being very, very beaten up 12 months ago. Um, within that space, we'd actually have a slight preference for oil rather than metals and miners.